not them games again, I bet you're thinking. So we've got most of the five pints best into can and cask. Now there isn't enough beer left in the tank to fill a cask, the last cask all the way to the top. In fact it's about three quarters full. Now we could just bung that, send it to the pub as a three quarter cask and do it that way. But this beer, I want to have a little bit of it at home without having to go through all those cans myself. So we don't have a brew fridge at home anymore because I didn't have room for it while we're doing work at home. And um, I took it apart and Tom now uses it as an overspill freezer for the um, kitchen, I'm sure. that I showed you on a video previously about it. Anyway, this little fella, I'm not sure where it came from. I think it came from uh, the chap at Thorn who had the boat yard and gave me a load of stuff. I think that's where this came from. So this has been sat in storage for ages. And I thought it would be a great move for a temporary cake fridge. So I want to have hand pull. I want to put this beer on hand pull at home. So I don't have to fit all of the associated nonsense with keg beer. Because it just wants to be a temporary affair. So I thought if I can just stick a corny keg in there. We might be able to siphon that beer out of the cask into a corny keg. And then I've got a 10 litre corny keg as well, so 30 litres out of a 3 quarter full cask. That's about perfect, isn't it? But of course, the corny keg won't fit in here because of the old shelf -a rooney And that is mainly due, due to the fact that it's hitting the front of the, this plastic moulding on the door. So I think what I'm going to do and I'm sure we've all done this loads in the past is just take off this plastic moulding but I'm not exactly sure how it's held in the screws are usually underneath the magnetic strip or something like that anyway let's have a dig around and see if we can figure out how to get it off well, I think the best way to work on it is if we take the door off, and we can do it without having to lay the compressor on its back. Because if we did, then we'd obviously have to fanny around with um, letting it stand for the compressor oil to run back down. And uh, yeah, because the compressors don't like pumping liquid, you see. So if you get any liquid in the compressor, you need to leave it for several hours for it to drain out and then it can pump gas again without damaging it so there we go that looks to me like we've got the door off that's magic so put the fridge back on the floor for now and we'll carry on working on the door. I think it works. I actually haven't plugged it in so it might be a little bit silly of me to go to all the trouble of setting this up where I've actually plugged it in. Some metal tape here. Look. Oh no that's from I don't really know. But I mean it all looks in good nick. Don't seem to be any damage or there's very little corrosion if any. So I'm going to assume that this little beauty is perfect. Don't tell me what refrigerant isopentane it's got in there. Right then, zip this off and work on the door. Let's have a look at this then. There's got to be an easy way of disassembling this. I wonder if it's just a matter of... Aha! Oh, maybe not. Mm. Further investigation required. 
I have a funny feeling though that this has been blow moulded and kind of pressed in place so it won't come apart. I can't find any fixings in there at all so I think we're going to go with the multi-tool and just cut through the plastic. We're not going to actually be using this as a fridge for storing food in again, ever. So let's just do it this way. Mind your headphones. That certainly looks the quickest and neatest way of, of getting all of that foam out of there actually. I don't know if you can see very well. Let's put some more light on there. Maybe that helps. But yeah, as I thought, let's put it in um, as a blow moulded kind of thing and then injection moulded this expanding foam inside I'm guessing and then it's all pressed in position to give a single moulded piece so that actually is very clean it can be left as it is there's no little to no dust coming off it so I'll just do the same thing to the rest of the uh, compartments I think the top's gonna have to come off as well the top's got like a little egg storage thing on there it's absolutely useless so we'll do that as well and then I reckon that'll just open and close and give us room inside for a corny keg. We've got it all in shot, I think we have. So I've got the cannon out for this boys and girls and all my bloody batteries are dead aren't they so I'm probably just going to have to change tack in a second but while I can I'm going to put this on, you know actually that door is probably hung in the wrong direction for where I'm going to put this fridge but it's temporary isn't it so I don't suppose it matters all that much but that multi-tool thing whatever it's called really did make short work of that plastic insulation on the inside so and it's not compromised it either I'm really happy to say the least. So there we have it. Will a corny keg fit inside and the door shut is the next question. Friggin' rats! So now I need to get my hand pulled down, which is up on the <coughs> which is up on the mezzanine, and then we need to clean that because it's gonna be filthy, and then we need to find a way fixing it to this or at least to something nearby which I might also have at home we shall see 
<laughs> oh, this is super Heath Robinson. Jesus, man. So we're going to stick our hand pull on the side, just like so. It could probably go that way and touch. I've tightened it up now. And, uh, well, just to have at home and to knock something like this up in a matter of minutes, this will freaking do, do you know what I mean? I can just chuck it in the back of the car, keep it upright of course, take it home, plug it in, drink that corny keg of beer on hand pull, without having to take cans home, and then I can bring this back. Very cautious of course, screwing some holes in the top, don't want to make any punctures. Put a quick thermostat in there, that was 15.6 a minute ago, it's coming down already. So it works, it would appear it works. I'm not going to count the chickens yet, but what I'm going to do is go and get some beer line and some beer line cleaner and we're going to give this bad boy a little bit of a rinse before we do anything else and see if I can find a drip tray for the bottom. So I have here some purple beer line cleaner and some beer line. So I'm going to stick this in there. I'm just going to get a little clip as well to clip it in place. I think I've got one in this drawer. I do. Look at me. So if I make that go to the bottom, clip it in place like that. And we're going to clean the hand pump. Should be very easy, provided that the valves are in good condition. There we go, so you can see it's drawing through the line already. Oh, there's a little bit of beer come out, but and have a look at that. Ten quid if you drink it. No, I wouldn't do that to you. So let's keep going. Oh, beautiful. Some pellicles coming out there, all sorts. And then we're into the beer line cleaner proper. So I'm just going to pull off a jug and then I'm going to throw it away and just let the line cleaner sit in the hand pump for 15 minutes to do its work. And then we'll come back and we'll pull the whole bucket through to really give it a good flush. And this purple line cleaner is slightly warm as well, which will just help loosen off any deposits. Look at that beautiful stuff. We're just in the process of salvaging the beer out of this keg, cask even, and it's going into this keg. While it may look a little bit complicated on the face of it, it really is very simple. I've just got an ordinary shive and we've just put a 9mm hole in there and we've stuck a gas pipe in one side and a beer dip tube in the other and then I've just tamped the shive into the cask a little bit and then we've put just like 5 psi of head pressure on there and that's evacuating the beer out of the cask through the tube into a cleaned and CO2 flushed corny keg via the beer outpost so we're going in through the outpost here to prevent it splashing of course and we're filling this corny keg from the bottom with the five pints best or the five points best clone and then I've also got the little 10 litre mini keg from brew keg tap there as well just to take any extra should we need to I don't do this very often, but because this is one of those beers that I really, it's come out, it's turned out really nice, it's a lot maltier than the bottled version at home, but we'll talk about that another day on a, on a review video, but today our job is just to not waste any beer and get some hand pull on at home, because it's friggin Easter weekend and why not? Oh, we're all done two kegs, 30 litres, and we've got the hand pump water pulled through 
and I'm smiling behind the camera because the amount of times Gemma's seen me do this, take a contraption home, set it up, serve beer, bring it back, not use it all the time. And she thinks I'm unbelievable doing it again. <laughs> I can't help myself. Anyway, I'm going to disconnect the hand pump and pipe so this will fit in the boot of the car and we'll pick it up when we're in the porch at home serving friggin real ale baby all right i've got you in a bit of a weird position there because this is a weird kind of setup i think so i'm going to kneel down in front of the cast tap and we're going to pull a pint so i haven't got the chiller on because I did have to lay it down in the back of the car unfortunately so I'm just going to give it five or six hours before I actually go for that. The beer however came out of tanks today at four degrees so it's still really cold even though today is 18 degrees outside believe it or not. So we're going to pull a beer and then I'm going to open the fridge and I'm going to show you how I've set this up to work on a corny keg and it's very MacGyver simply because it's not a permanent thing. I know there are people out there who've done this and uh, they put flowing dip tubes and all sorts of things in the keg. This ain't that. So let's get going. So it's a half pint pull, this particular beer engine. So two solid pulls should give us a nice looking beer. How do you like that? So if I quickly whip you off the tripod you'll see that yeah it's hazy it's gonna be hazy there's little to no head on there either because I probably could have done a better job at pulling that originally but that's gonna settle out nicely I think I'm gonna have to have a drink hold on a minute Oh, that's wonderful. It really is wonderful. Right, let's have a look how we've MacGyvered this fridge together in order to work. So we've just got a simple connection on the back here going into the back of the fridge. Being careful not to drill through any cooling pipes. And then inside we have two quick disconnects and one for beer, one for gas, and then we've got this little CO2 injector here. So I've just drawn a little bit of beer out. So just a little squirt of CO2 to replace. And then I'm unwinding it. I'm actually not putting any pressure in there. And that should just replace the top of the uh, keg with CO2 instead of air meaning that the whole thing will last considerably longer if I don't get through that in just a few days. I probably will. So it's just that simple and uh, you know in a week's time when this is done and dusted the whole thing will probably be back up in the storeroom in the brewery. But for now, for today, this is exactly what I needed after a long day at work. Cheers boys and girls. Cheers.